Okay. Welcome. Okay. Welcome to DCTP.TV live from the uh, Campus Party 2012 in the former airport Tempelhof in Berlin. My next guest is Julien Forjo. Welcome to the program, Julien. Thank you. Uh, how do you like the, the Campus Party? What do you think? I love it. I've been on a couple of others in, in Sao Paulo and Colombia. Ah, and, uh, uh, campus parties as yes, well? Yes, yes. Ah, and are they any different from, from, those, from this in Berlin? Well, they're a bit different because, uh, first of all, it's a bit warmer. It's one of the things. And, and people are also more, let's say, excited. And, and they've run the events many years there. So they definitely know what's going on. Here it's the first time, so it's a bit more, let's say, Bit eclectic, a bit eclectic, a bit people are kind of looking for their place, trying to understand the concept and so forth. But it's been, it's been really great. And in, 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 um, uh, in Latin America and Spain, is it any different uh, for, apart from the people and the location and the temperature? Are there different topics, different talks? Uh, well, there, there are a bit more national aspects. So you have more people that are really coming from, from the economy, from the, uh, the region. Uh, but they also have a lot of international speakers and uh, and bringing kind of trying to to raise the uh, the bar uh, of the country at every single event. All right. So you you used to work with Rovio, the Finnish uh, game game gaming company. Uh, yeah, best known for their for the for the Angry Birds uh, yep. game. Uh, what did you do there? So I was doing product management and I uh, was developing the uh, part of the digital services. Uh, that Rovio is now setting in place. So they, Rovio used to be a gaming company and now they're turning into an entertainment franchise. So they're really growing in a lot of different areas than just the game itself. For example? Well, the, uh, all the um, merchandising, all the uh, TV and um, animations and, and so forth. And even the game itself is evolving. They're using more technologies from partners and they're developing their own technologies to um, add to the experience and develop the uh, gaming experience. Uh, what do you mean by saying digital services? Well, what is it? It's all the um, technologies that, that support. For example, it can be technologies to do leaderboards or to do um, new uh, even ads or, or things like that. So usually startups, there are a lot of startups in this field. For example, analytics, advertisement, um, community aspects. And, uh, and these are things that are now starting to be more integrated into the games. On other platforms, browsers, consoles, PCs, there's this model of free-to-play emerging. Mm -hmm. So you get the, the, the game for free, basically, and uh, the companies make money by selling you all kinds of stuff in so, the game. So virtual economies and so free, freemium model. Is Rubio model. going in the same direction? Well, they've already done that on a couple of their titles. So there are definitely an opportunity in, in, that, in that business. And how was it working there? I mean, is it a, a serious business or are there just some guys hanging out together? Or how well, is it? It, it, it is a business. So they are building a company. They've grown really fast. I was employee 56 and now there are about 450 employees. So in a year and a half, that's a massive growth. Um, and, and they are really, really developing things. But the culture is still pretty laid back and fun. It, it's still about making products for the fans and, and making sure that the fans are happy. So it's been, it's been a really, really good learning experience for me. It was, it was a lot of fun. What did you learn? Well, I learned a lot about people and, and how to you know, work with people coming from so many different places. So they, they do have a lot of internationals, but they also have a lot of Finns that, that come from really different backgrounds. So that has been quite exciting. I also learned a lot about gaming because I, I was not in the gaming industry. I was in the mobile industry, uh, working at Nokia Symbian Foundation and, and then setting up my own mobile strategy company. But the gaming industry was, uh, was really exciting, understanding how, how you design a game. That was fun. And yeah, just share with that. How do you design a game? I mean, what did you learn there? What was one thing that you said, well, okay, that I didn't know before? Well. What I learned from Rovio essentially is that it's all about the characters and the story yeah. and the gameplay. These are the three things. So when you have a great character, an iconic character, it's easy to, to spread the brand. It's easy for people to associate with it. The uh, storyline, even if it's really simple, gives the, the reason of why. Why am I doing this? And, and people like to know why. But then the gameplay part is we're getting into a situation where 
people don't have time to play a lot at once. That's what you used to do on your console, that's what you used to do on your PC. But nowadays with mobile, you've got a couple of minutes to kill, well, you're going to kill them. So either you're going to go check your emails, you're going to go read an article, or you're going to just start a game. And the model of Angry Birds is pretty amazing because you can play for 30 seconds and pass a level. Or you can play for three hours and still try to get the high score on that uh, level. Uh, do, do people still laugh or, or sometimes laugh about it? Like, man, look, we got some birds here and uh, you can throw them at pigs. And well, uh, we make a fortune with this and we have almost 500 employees now. Is it? Do, the, do you really realize it sometimes and laugh about it or? It, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's kind of crazy. It is crazy. And, and it's, sometimes it's, uh, I mean, the guys have, have a hard time realizing what happened to them. That there is a bit of, a, of this kind of luck feeling. But at the same time, it's, uh, it was a lot of work to get there. And it's still a lot of work to keep in maintaining it and keeping growing it. But then you left uh, Rovio um, and went to an um, a electronic motor company, Scarlet Motors, also yeah. in Finland. And uh, what do you do? So we're building sports cars for the next generations. We, uh, we've identified that there is a big opportunity in terms of uh, electric powertrains that, allow, that will allow and that allow already cars to be a lot more fun, a lot more simple, and, and gives that acceleration feeling. And um, we, uh, I met uh, a really great guy that designed the brand, Johanna Kaleo, uh, who is the father of Scarlet Motors, and, and we connected on a lot of different aspects of, of our experience related to cars. So we spent a lot of time refining the concepts that he had, and, uh, and I realized that, well, there are a lot of people that are interested in cars, but not that many people that know how to make cars. So what we're doing is we're building a product But we're also sharing the journey of building that product with the community. So yesterday at Campus Party, we launched the community in beta for people to uh, be part of it, see our progress, but also be part in supporting us in giving their own passion, giving their own ideas in a more of a co-creation model. Uh, just provide an example. How, how do I take part in the building of your car? So if you look at open communities, open source software, for example, a software is made out of multiple parts. But at the same time, it's really difficult to attribute these parts to an individual. You might see that in the source code, but when the user uses the product, he doesn't necessarily know. Yeah. Now, a car is made out of a lot of parts as well. So somebody might just design a cup holder. Or a steering it, wheel. Or the or steering wheel. Or, so that's in, in, the, in the design part. But then somebody might support in, in the suspension design to improve and reduce, the, for example, the use of material or the cost or increase the strength. Or then it might be in the software of the car as well. So there are tons of different parts in a car that can be you know, supported. Or it might just be somebody that just wants to get a Scarlet t-shirt and, and is happy to uh, promote the brand. And, and why would I want to support you? What's the, what's, the, what's the upside? Just taking part and be part of the community and contribute to, to a thing I like and uh, with, with stuff I know, or is there something more in well, it for you, me? Th this is what most of the people do in, in open source software and, and hardware companies or communities. It's, it's just the fact that you can, you can feel good about it yourself, that, that you've learned and you've developed. And, but we also want to uh, recognize these people And we want to make sure that they, they can then well, maybe get a job at, at our company. That's definitely an opportunity. But also maybe get a job in another company. So you can see that as an opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to put your mark in the industry and say that I contributed in this product that is now being sold. And this is what I did. Okay, let's say I have a, I have a I don't know, revolutionary idea of, I don't know, uh, a seatbelt. A different system. Mm -hmm. um, how do I tell you about it? How do I contribute to your project? Well, first you register on scarletmotors.com and then you post a message in the forum saying that you've been thinking about something like that and uh, you'd like to share it with us. And then other people might say, yeah, I ha we had the same ideas and kind of pull together into refining the idea, refining the concept 
until it's to the point that technically it makes sense, safety it makes sense, and, and maybe we'll patent that together to get to a market. And, and you observe the discussions in a forum and, and I'm, take part where it's necessary? Exactly. So I'm, I'm available on Twitter and Facebook and, and the forum. People can just connect and directly with me and, and we can exchange and, and discuss. Okay. And can I, okay, forum is mostly text based. Uh, is there. Uh, we have media, we have video media, integration, okay, 3D we models have audio, and, and stuff. That's possible as well. Okay, and how many people take part in that collaboration so already? Right now, we, uh, what we've built is uh, we've, we started with a really small amount of people, the people that we had around, and that's about 100, 150 people. Uh, we've launched yesterday to a, a more global community. We've got already 200 registration in, uh, in 24 hours, which is pretty good for a beta stage. Yeah. And uh, then the other in aspect is that we have a partnering strategy where we also support the partners. So let's say that you are a company that manufactures seat belts yeah. and you have that revolutionary technology. If you want to get that integrated into an existing car manufacturer, you're going to have to go through a huge amount of steps before that manufacturer says that, okay, yes, we can put that in our product that's going to get into the market in 10 years. But in 10 years, you're a small company that, that has this revolutionary idea. Right. It's not going to exist anymore, right? So for us, you can come with us as a company and say, we have that revolutionary idea and we'll integrate it straight away if it makes sense. And we'll promote you as a partner saying that this company is making that amazing thing. And say, oh, okay, I designed a steering wheel or a seat belt and in the end, it, it'll be part of the, of, the, of the sold product. Will I get uh, some kind of monetary reward for it? Well, it depends on the model. If you're a partner as a company, then yes, you will. we will work together on the business model. If you're part of the community, then if that design is revolutionary, well, we could look at the patent. But then again, it will all depend on, on how the community evolves. We, we want to give freedom to do things differently, and we don't necessarily want to be too squared into, okay, these are the rules, follow the rules. No, we'll make the rules with the people as they go. And at what stage are you now? Do you have a car already in manufacture? Or in so we have a 3D model, um, which is now being studied by a car manufacturer for final approval and so forth. And we're in the stage that we're raising an, another round of funding to go to the prototyping phase and really build the physical thing. There's another popular company, it's called Tesla. Yeah. In, in, in California, they, they basically do the same thing as an electric sports car, mm -hmm. and they sell it for, I don't know, 100,000 bucks or so. Uh, what's the difference between you and them? So Tesla has manufactured 2,500 uh, roasters, but that's it. They're not selling any more of those. Now they're focusing on the sedan and, and the family cars. Yeah. So that's where we see that there's an opportunity still in the sports cars, and uh, the market is growing itself really fast. So there is opportunity for both Tesla and us and even other companies in the, like, let's say, new companies to capture part of that market. This uh, collaboration aspect is one, is one aspect, um, but there are, in terms of electric cars, there are many, many challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do anything differently? Like, do you have different kind of energy sources or, uh, I don't know, something else invented? Well, we do have um, a modularity aspect. So we're looking at making sure that any single components that is critical now, but that will evolve in the future, will be able to be replaced. So that means electronics, potentially batteries, as well as software and, uh, and upgrades. And what is your idea? I mean, the, 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 the very important part is the battery, the, 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 obviously the electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are some, some guys, former SAP guy, who's trying to say, well, what's this idea? Well, we build up the whole infrastructure with filling stations where you go in with your car and it's a modular system. And once you have entered the filling station, uh, it your car will the be replaced and, and, your, and, and, and yeah. the, the battery will be uh, replaced and you move on after, I don't know, five minutes. Five minutes. So th there's a company in Israel called Better Place, yeah. and I guess that's the one you're referring to. Yeah. Um, we, we've looked at that model, but to me, as, a, as an individual, what I see is that right now, there are 
gasoline companies or oil companies that are controlling the market. The model that Better Place is providing yeah. is the same model uh -huh. for electricity. You know, in the era of peer-to-peer, -peer, of sharing, of exchanging, I don't think the future is into that kind of system. I think the future is in you charge at your friend's place and your friend receive a, a voucher from your own electricity company telling that, hey, you've helped your friend for a couple of euros by charging his car. Why don't you switch to us? Okay. These kind of models where where it's more like, well, I'll, you know, I'll drop by your place and I'll stay half an hour, 45 minutes so that I can charge my car. I think that the more social aspect of doing these things. And, and where are we right now in terms of, 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 of electric motors? I mean, well, we're f pretty far. I mean, 90% of the industry machines are using electric motors. Yeah. I mean, so, for cars, like... But, but that's the thing. Yeah. So there's been a lot of learning from the industry in, in machines building and so forth. Now we're moving to um, a, a next stage, which is how do you change the packaging of the motors so that they fit into cars? And right in the past, it used to be fairly long and, and you know, small diameter motors. Now we're shifting things by going to what we call pancakes motors, which are really, really short, but are bigger. And okay. they are, they're almost the size of the wheel. So that, that has been the first shift. The second one is in-wheel motors. So using the same kind of technologies, you can have the motor in the hub straight in the wheel. Ah, okay. So there are a couple of different things that are happening. But the really exciting thing is the efficiency of an electric motor. It's above 80%. Uh -huh. It's really efficient compared to 20-25% average on a gasoline motor, gasoline engine. And, and what are the, still the challenges? Well, the challenge is definitely how to keep on reducing the losses of electricity. Uh -huh. But also how to improve the um, I'd say improve the capacity in the battery, that's a good thing, but I think it's more of a changing the mindset of people. The same way as you used to have a regular cell phone and you would charge it once a week. You might have even have a Nokia or a Siemens yeah. and you charge it once a week. Now, how often do you charge your iPhone? Twice a day. Twice a day, but you still do it, right? Oh. Why? Because it brings you enough value that it doesn't bother you charging it twice a day. Otherwise, you would go back to a regular phone and charge it once a week. We see exactly the same shift happening in the car industry. That yes, you would fill your car once a week at the gas station, but now you're going to charge your car every place you are. You're going to go to the shopping center and you're going to go to this shopping center because they give you free charging. You're shopping for an hour, two hours, you're charged. You leave the place, your car is fully charged, ready for 200, 300 kilometers. And what do you think has to happen for electric cars really to become popular? Well, there's a challenge in cost. So more volumes will reduce the unit cost. That's one thing. Yeah. Um, there is a need of, of support from an infrastructure side, but this is already happening. The city of Berlin, for example, is doing a lot of things for that. Uh, Helsinki is doing a lot of things for that. Paris is doing a lot of things for that. So we, we already see that this is happening. It's going to take a couple of years before it's really there. Uh, but, but I think the other thing is, is more companies like us, more smaller companies building their dreams and sharing that with the community. Instead of having large companies that are dictating the future of the car industry every five to seven years. What, what changed that made it possible for small companies like you or Tesla uh, to, to, to evolve? Because car manufacturing until then was a huge business like Daimler, BMW, yep. Volkswagen. It was a really industrial endeavor. So, and now suddenly it's possible for small startups to, to become car manufacturers. What was, the, uh, what was the point that made it possible? So there are th three different aspects. First of all, the evolution of technology made it so that if you take an IC, so a traditional car and uh, an electric car, the complexity is reduced a lot. You have a lot less parts in an electric car, it's a lot more simple. It's still based in a lot of electronics, but electronics are also really present in an IC anyway. So you displace the requirements for the needs for mechanical and, and kind of engine specialists. So it makes it simpler. 
Then the second thing is, there are a lot of people with mechanic skills right now that are looking for jobs. Uh. It, a lot of people. And getting into the car industry is really difficult. So the startup opportunity is something that a lot of people now consider and say that, well, you know, I, I, I built cars in my garage by, you know, by doing some things and it, it's been taking me five years to build one. Now I could just join a startup, do that with them and making in a year and a half or two years. So there are, that's the, the second opportunity. And the third opportunity is social networks and social media. Car, traditional car manufacturers have 10 to 15 intermediaries between them and their consumers. Yeah. Social media connects directly the consumer and the manufacturer. And that's where the startups are the best. Because we interact directly with our customers. We don't need to have millions of customers. We only need to have enough so that we can sell our stock, sell our product. And we're ramping up. So instead of having these you know, really heavy costs and doing huge marketing to sell the product, mm -hmm. we interact directly with the people and we provide them what they want. And, and what idea, what, what advice, what approach uh, did come from the community and went into the product as it is right now? In terms of uh, us or in yeah, general? In, in, you know, in terms of your cars, Carlin Motors. Well, right now we've been working with, uh, with people, for example, that in terms of how we build the company, yeah. we, we've just been working with passionate people. We didn't necessarily have the resources to hire people. And we've already been working with, uh, for example, our chief vehicle engineer now uh, used to be just supporting us and in, in helping us and saying like, well, you guys are doing something cool. I'll, I'll give you a hand. And now he's going to be joining us almost full time. Okay. So this is, this is one person, then there are a lot of other person around us that have done that. But then if you look at the bigger picture, other communities that have made it work, there's a movie called Iron Sky yeah. that you're probably aware of. And they, they use that model of co-creation with a strong leadership from the product development on, on the company, but opening part of the script, part of the 3D FX, part of the design to the community and giving them a chance to be part of it. And have you considered uh, crowdfunding as well? We, we've been thinking about that and uh, it, is, it is an opportunity, um, but right now we're more looking at the um, at working the, with VCs and, and private investors. Why? In, well, the reason is we uh, definitely want to learn and fast, not only about how to build a car, because that's what we're doing every day, but also how to build a company. And these people have the experience uh, and the support to help us grow and develop the business. Because we're not just making a product, we're building a company. <laughs> and where do you see crowdfunding as a possibility? And what stage for what kind of aspect? Um, well, there are different aspects, but I think the, uh, we, we are looking at how could we uh, crowd, crowdfund the, uh, the development of the prototypes, for example or then the uh, first small series of car. Um, now, how this would look like, how would people be involved, we'll see. But we've definitely been looking at Kickstarter in the US. They're now coming to the UK. I know that there are a couple of platforms in, in France and in Germany that are setting themselves up. So we're definitely keeping an eye on that. And, and when do you think your first car will be sold? When it will be ready and an amazing product. Okay. Fabian, thanks very much for coming. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for watching.